This video is about a Kawasaki FR691V. It's off of a commercial Hustler Raptor Super Duty. Uh, this is the commercial, I mean, the residential version of a Kawasaki engine. This is, I wanted to make a video just about everything of how an internal engine works on a Kawasaki FR691V. So this is the engine cover, took the engine off. This is the engine upside down. I'll go through some of the things I wish somebody had told me when I took apart this engine. So this is, right now the valve cover is off of this engine. This is the valve cover. And there's normally a black gasket on there. You take the bolts off, remove the valve cover. These are the valves. There's two rocker arms. You need to adjust the valve lashing after 300 hours of use. If the valve's lashing here is not adjusted, then that can lead to some problems. You have to read the manual carefully on the Kawasaki engines. Uh, I will talk about how to adjust the valve lashing, but there are lots of videos specifically on adjusting the valve lashing. There's a cam bolt right here. It's not symmetrical diameter through here. So what you do is you turn this top bolt until you can adjust this lashing here. The spec will tell you exactly what the lashing is supposed to be. The lashing is a, a gap between this rocker arm and this spring when the engine is at top dead center. And I'll show you top dead center in a second here. This uh, push rod here is going to a poppet. The poppet is driven by uh, this cranksha uh, crankshaft, which is controlling the timing arms on this, on this, uh, this gear here. The, uh, there's two poppets, two push rods. One is the exhaust and one is the intakes. This is the exhaust here. We can see that uh, this, this would control this output here and the input is over here and the carb is supposed to be here. We're looking at the engine upside down. So you'd have one controlling the input of the gas and air mixture fuels this is a, not a EFI engine. So it controls the, the gas and the fuels mixed together, shoved into this container. When this push it, this pop it pushes down and then it ignites and the, and the chamber will pull this apart and look at that. And then this control pop it here controls the exhaust valve, pushes the exhaust out here into the exhaust pipe. So I got all the parts here for this engine. I'll talk about what went wrong on this particular engine. So I'm going to pull off these push rods here. These, these uh, push rods uh, can tend to break and what I've seen is that they tend to break or bend when the engine gets too hot. And that's what happened to this engine. Put these to the side. I'm going to pull this. You have uh, six bolts here to pull the head off. Uh, two of these bolt heads are going to be inside valve cover that you'll need to take off to get to those two and then you'll have to remove this rocker arm here to get to um, this bolt down in here and once you get those out and you can pull this off and this is the spark plug here so you take the spark plug out not necessary to be in there take this bolt out head gasket on here but normally when you hear a head gasket is leaking there's a metal gasket that goes right in here and it can leak any which way into any of these chambers so you can have a head gasket leaking into the exhaust a head gasket leaking into the input head gasket leaking to the output and in this case I had a head gasket leaking on cylinder number two you can see here there's a leak right here all this oil kind of on the outside it was leaking out um, this is our cylinder here, and we can see as we turn the engine, the piston is coming out and back in. There will be carbon buildup. Mine had a ton of carbon buildup on here after 300 hours. And why that? Why is that bad? Carbon buildup on the piston head, not necessarily good for combustion-wise, but it's more importantly, carbon buildup on your head here. These valves, when that rocker arm pushes down on that spring there, it pushes this valve up. I'll 
I have the finger strength to do it, but it pushes this valve out and that's letting the gas, the gas and the uh, air and fuel mixture in. And then this valve is pushing up here and letting the gases out. And then your spark plug is right there, igniting this in this little tiny combustion chamber. Imagine this piston is all the way at top dead center. That top, that's top dead center right there. And a lot of videos will tell you when you have the head on, you feel inside where the spark plug hole is and you'll feel top dead center, top dead center is when this head is right there. So you can see when the head goes like that. That's why when you have a, they say get a little Allen wrench and stick the Allen wrench into the spark plug hole and you're feeling this piston push against your Allen wrench. And when you feel it right there, that's top dead center. So you don't have to pull the head off to find top dead center, but it's good to understand what's going on. Just sticking an Allen wrench and saying, you'll feel it when you know, but you don't know what's inside. That's what's inside. You're gonna feel that piston beach right there, that's top dead center. I'm gonna retract that piston all the way in. And what happened into this engine is it overheated. A lot of grass got built up in these cooling fins. Somehow a rag got jammed into the, underneath the, the cover. And the grass built up against the rag. Cylinder number uh, one over here, cylinder number two. Cylinder number one overheated, got a gasket failure on the head gasket, bent the two push rods, push rods got reset, lashings got reset, and then the valve broke off. When the valve broke off, valve breaking off in a combustion chamber, smashed the piston. And when I found it, the valve was sitting right there, and all this metal in here got pushed into the internal crank case and the crank case and I had to go and fish out all the big chunks and there was what happened is the big chunks got into these gears got ground into like metal sand I had to take it all the way down to the oil pump and the oil filter screen I'll show you in here and just it's cleaning out all that grime so a valve failure you're taking the engine off of the platform, flipping it over, all new seals, all new parts. Now this piston's gotta get replaced. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the piston arm too. You can see inside there, the piston arm got damaged by that valve that broke off. See that, that's all damaged. So this whole, needs a whole new piston arm. The piston's got these uh, seals like this. And there's lots of videos on YouTube on how to replace these seals. There's different types of seals in the, you gotta get a steel compressor to compress it and put it in. Sometimes you can, there's other hacks you can use like a, a pipe clamp or a spring, you can actually get a spring compressor from auto parts store for about 20 bucks. And you compress this and put it back in. And I'm gonna pull, pull this out. So inside here, we can see, let me see if I can grab this labeled these these are the pocket valves they're going in here and inside this rockers these rockers are basically pushing on those poppets when they push on that that's controlling the timing and you can see here on this gear there's this little detent here and on the Kawasaki the main crankshaft the time this this dot right here controls the timing of when those valves are opening and they have to be opened and closed at a certain time if you don't have it open and closed wrong at the right time that's like your timing chain being off and you're not going to have the right combustion and exhaust and on the crankshaft there's an equal piston that tooth has to be right into that tooth and it is really really tiny let me see if i can even find it it's on one of these teeth and i have dust on here just from my rag so just finding that little detent is very hard. It's right, right there, you can see it. So that those teeth have to line up for the timing of the engine to be right. And you can see here, this is the crankshaft that as I turn this, rag is not supposed to be in there. As I turn this, it's controlling the piston moving in and out. Right now I have that broken piston removed out of here. Um, and then I'll show you the, so this is the, this is the top of the crankcase down here. 
that would be the bottom of the crankcase here, which is holding your oil. And the oil is coming up through these valves right here. Uh, these ports here are going through. So one is an input to the oil filter, one is an output. And it's basically using the case as the plumbing for the oil exchange. And so it's going to pump it up here, then down here, and then it's washing the oil and the air. There's a breather here. That's how the air is making sure that the engine, you know, is able to breathe in and out. This is a breather too. Um, I haven't figured out what this one does yet. Um, but the, it was interesting to see that the plumbing of the oil is actually built into the of the crankcase. The crankcase is heavy duty, uh, heavy duty cast here. Um, got the starter back here. I just left the starter on. It says take the starter off when you're doing all this work. And then on the other side is the flywheel and the stator. And maybe I'll make a video about that if people find this useful. Uh, I had a, oh, just over 300 hours on this engine when it died, which Kawasaki, I have four years and 300 hours. Kawasaki guarantees three years and 300 hours, but I've exceeded the time. Um, let's look at the bottom of the crankcase. This is the bottom of the crankcase. Underneath here is your oil pump. And it's just basically two planetary gears that are used to spin in a circular motion to pump the oil. And right here, there's an oil filter screen. That's to use to catch the large chunks of oil before they hit your filter. So the, guy, the, the goal is to try to catch the big chunks of, oil, of metal before they hit your oil filter. And then the small chunks are going to get caught into the oil filters. The oil filter is made for small particulates. So inside your oil filter, you're trying to catch all the dust and junk and metal. And the idea is to keep a lot of the metal junk out of the engine. You shouldn't have those metal shards running around. There will, you, know, you look through the cast on this Kawasaki engine, and there are little bits of piece of cast junk that will actually fall down in your engine. You know, little little chunks back in here, which will flake off. And, and your, engine, your, your oil filter screen and your oil filter are made to catch all those large chunks of cast. And it, it was confusing to see at first because you look at it and I was thinking, oh, this is shards from my piston head. But it's actually just kind of spooge from the cast. Uh, right here, you can see kind of this junk. This is not from my piston. This is just cast garbage there that's about to flake off. But the engine's been running reliably for 200 and... That's when it, if I lost the push rods, it was 271 hours. I read on here the hour and the date for when they did the oil change. And I changed the oil when I lost my push rods. And then I'm about 310 right now. And the whole engine just, I could hear it when I was driving, it blew up, and the engine just shut down. I hear the oil spraying everywhere, and it was just bad noise from there on. So I'm hoping I can put a new piston in here, get all the gaskets all set. You have to use a gasket sealer here for the, between the crankcases, and you have to put everything back in. So I have it all labeled for which parts and bolts and screws go where to try to get it back together. And this is an example of the head gasket. The, when I took it apart, all the head gaskets uh, seemed pretty good shape. I think um, the leak that I had on this head gasket was probably just a bolt that was loose, which was causing the oil to spill out. It wasn't a, um, a failure. So a failure would be like a line that goes, you'll see there's a line that goes through here. Those other videos will show you what a head gasket failure looks like. It's nice to see everything all put together. This is the flywheel right here. Very heavy piece of mesh metal. And underneath there is going to be the stator coil spinning around, generating electricity. Uh, maybe later I can show you the, uh, the timing of the spark plug and the, and, the, and the flywheel, but that'll be for another video. Over there I've got the carb, the other head, another valve cover, and all bolts and pieces that go to this engine. Okay, thanks for watching.